My god. I cannot stand it when people say this movie has no plot. It had a very detailed plot. This movie was one of those movies where you need to have watched the others to understand. The plot is that the Umbrella Corporation has captured Resident Evil Apocalypse's Jill Valentine and made her their slave. They have to fight her and pry the little spider thing off her chest to make her mind straight. By the way, Jill is very much aware of what she's doing, she just can't control it. Umbrella has used cloning technology to clone old Resident Evil characters, but this time make their minds bad. Evil. Hence, Resident Evil. They were not back from the dead. They had no memory of any past experiences with Alice. What irks me is that people say the whole suburban Alice thing made no sense. It made perfect sense. Obviously, the world has been overrun by zombies. They cannot kill six billion zombies single-handedly and just expect them to die. They need to learn how to control the virus so they can so they make simulations to test and figure out what they can do to stop it or to control it. What was which was the whole point of the underground facility. Why Umbrella likes to put things underground like the hive? I don't know. But I don't know how many times they've said it in other movies, but Alice is the only one, with the exception of Ambry, Angie from Resident Evil Apocalypse, that successfully bonded with the T-Virus. Meaning, she was the only human to give the right am given the right amount of virus to just make her stronger and not a zombie. Which is why they make clones of her. That's what suburbia is for. They even directly explained it to you in this movie. Ada Wong explains, explains it as a program... The clone. I'm sorry, guys. I have a really big speech on here, and there's like this thing pop up ad that will not go away, and I can't see. So, so she explains the program. The clone has what? Go. I'm doing something. Alright, that's my sister. So the clone has given, has been programmed with knowledge. Uh, where'd I go? Umbrella wants her to have, which they still have not figured out as she has failed the test. By the way, this is not the first time they've done simulations like this. If you've ever watched Resident Evil Extinction, Dr. Isaacs made hundreds of Alice clones and put her through tests. Becky, in the simulation, she survived, which is why she stays with Ada and Alice. Like I said before, the program, they program her with certain knowledge, in which case, making Becky believe Alice was her mother. Now for Wesker. It's almost been factually proven by this movie franchise that Wesker is superhuman. In Resident Evil Afterlife, there is a shot of Wesker parachuting out of his plane, avoiding the nuclear blast. This is why Alice isn't concerned when he pops up on screen. Retribution was... Oh. Very detailed support team. Oh, wait, here we go. Very detailedly explained how they were in an underground facility used for experiments with the zombies. Which I mentioned before. They need to rendezvous with the support team Barry Burton and... Leon S. Kennedy, Luther West, and two other men who are killed off. Aiden Wong clearly explains why, because they need to stop Umbrella Corporation by blowing up the base. Now for the topic no one can figure out, but it's quite simple. Michelle Rodriguez playing two characters. Like before, they make clones, one to test in suburbia. She played a character who just happened to be in the neighborhood. Why they use her? Um, because Michelle Rodriguez is awesome. She is a suburban girl who survived with Alice and Becky. Alice knew exactly who she was, but realized she was a clone and never said anything about Rain. Now, for her other self. Obviously, the Umbrella Corporation has cloned old Resident Evil characters to fight against Alice. To fight and against Alice and with the Umbrella Corporation, including Rain, Michelle Rodriguez, Carlos Oliveira, Oda Fair, I don't know how to say his name, one, which is Colin Sammons, and others, which is why you always hear 
her say, everything I've ever done has been used against me. She's just another one of Umbrella's clones at this movie. Becky is 9 to 12 years old in this film. She does not get the whole clone thing, which is why her comment to Suburban Rain, I've, ne I've met your sister, and it... And I quote, I've met your sister, and she's not very nice. It's merely a joke that clone the clones are not related. She becomes... The clones are just not related. Which is why... Okay. She becomes more stronger by... Because she infects herself with the Las Plagas, turning her unstoppable. And most people say it gave no knowledge about Las Plagas. E Really? My computer's being retarded. Like, it's just not even working at all. Um, anyway, so. <sighs> okay, so anyway, they did give plenty of knowledge about Las Plagas, because even though the, the Red Queen says... Okay, let's, again, skip that and stuff. It gave plenty of information. The gray men with chainsaws and RPGs and the jeeps and motorcycles with the Colts and Ganados from Resident Evil 4, the video game. Last, she get, she explains Last Plagas Virus, and it explains it is, in, when the Red Queen is on screen, if you pay attention, she does explain the Last Plagas, Last Plagas Virus pops up and explains it. Also, many words pop on the screen, all explaining Las Plagas, which it did give much knowledge about the Las Plagas. They just didn't stress it. Ways he... Wait. The first In the first movie, the Red Queen was obviously fried and shut down. You people do realize that the hive was made by Wesker and Umbrella, correct? He has ways he can get his hands on technology, which they re recreated in the base and the underground facility in this movie. Now for the giant liquor thing. Not really sure where it came from, but it is a giant liquor. People question why it cocoons Becky, not eats her. Um, do you really think they're gonna let a 9 to 12 year old deaf girl die? Come on now. Common sense. Only movie I've ever seen where a child dies is Halloween 4 and The Woman in Black. The liquor provides rising action to the storyline. Now for the 3D. People say they hate the whole things flying out of the screen at you, like when the axe man throws the axe and the, it's all like, Wah! <laughs> Um. What the do you think 3D is for? I mean, it... It means three-dimensional. You can feel or touch surroundings. Obviously, things will fly at you. You don't like 3D? Then don't see the movie! In 3D. Jeez. Now for the beginning of the movie. Afterlife ended very suspensefully with a bunch of umbrella choppers arriving at the Arcadia ship. One of which containing Jill Valentine, brainwashed. It obviously is going to where it left- It obviously is going to pick up where it left off. Now, if you people pay attention, Alice is thrown underwater, which she is then unconscious, and she had to have gotten captured in some way. This isn't Tom and Jerry, where she can just get hit by a frying pan, and she's knocked out. The only thing I cannot figure out in this whole movie was where in the... were Chris, Kmart, and Claire. And Alice didn't even mention them, so this movie was a necessary... This... That's the only thing I cannot figure about this movie. Now, in conclusion, this movie was a necessary implement with a complex storyline. I've always been a very huge fan of the Resident Evil books, movies, and games. I've seen them all. I've I've played. I've seen them all twenty thousand times, except this one because it just came out. I've only seen it twice. I've played and beaten all, and I mean all, even the vi the video game for Game Boy Color, Resident Evil Gaiden and beaten them. I have read all the books, and they are very good. And so, Paul W. S. Anderson, you should be very proud of your franchise, and I and I watched Mila jo jo Jovovich's interview, interview. Don't kill Alice, please. There will obviously be another movie, considering the high twist at the end, Ugh. which I was very impressed with and never would have expected. By the way, people, I am a 13-year-old 8th grader. That 
that can figure out these movies. So if I can, I think you can too. So, Paul, be proud. Don't give up in this franchise. I will always be there to see a new Resident Evil. I will never give up. And I am your franchise's number one fan. Hope you see this video yourself, Paul. The rest of this speech will be in the description.